Welcome to Book Time with Ryan. I am Ryan, and today I will be talking about, spoiler alert, the hero dies. And spoiler alert, the hero died. This is nonfiction. It is a memoir of love, loss, and other four-letter words, and it is by Michael Asiello. I work with Michael's brother, David. And David was able to get my copy of this book signed by his brother at the I, I don't know if it's considered premiere how those things work but at the initial showing I guess premiere of uh, the movie that's out right now so you can watch it people says this is heartbreaking and surprising and hilarious I agree it is I don't know how I did it so I will talk about that and I will say that it is rough to read because not because of the way it's written it's great read i mean it, it is well done it is very well done but it is hard emotionally to read this and it has uh, in some ways expanded my horizons a little bit on what i'm comfortable reading i've i've, I've not really read a book about gay relationships uh, i'm straight I do have plenty of books I've read that have gay characters in gay relationships, but this definitely goes more in depth. And um, I, I think it was a moment to kind of grow as a reader and a fellow human. Oh, so that was uh, interesting for me. This is so hard to read because it gives so the hero dies. In this book. This is nonfiction. The hero is Michael Asiello's partner and eventual husband, uh, Christopher Cowan, uh, who goes by Kit. And uh, we kind of alternate in the book between chapters. My, sorry, my. F I did get a new. I got a new chair for Christmas. Um, it's not here yet, but it will replace the creaky old 1930s uh, I guess a banker's chair um, the book alternates between process of discovering and fighting the cancer uh, Kit is diagnosed with neuroendocrine cancer uh, he's got about a fist sized tumor in his rectum and through the process of trying to get a diagnosis, but then also uh, kind of like a plan to fight it, uh, they discover more nodes on his, I think his liver, his lungs, and eventually his brain. Not good news, but you, you as it happened with Mike and Kit, these horrible updates uh, happen gradually so it, the story the the prognosis gets worse and worse and we alternate so we alternate almost every other chapter between what would have been kind of like current day what's happening with the cancer uh discovery diagnosis treatment and uh, kind of going back in time to how mike and kit met how their relationship developed. Uh, and and the, the thing that I, I really do like about this is the, the hero's Kit. But Kit is an imperfect person. Or was an imperfect person. And Michael does not shy away from that. And that's that's great because... I, I mean, that... It's not great that he's imperfect. Um... But it's reality, and I think a lot of times when you're reading about tragedy, you kind of get this revisionist idea of what the person was, who the person was, and I feel like Michael doesn't do that. He gives you the full look, because that's what he's going through, too. You know, he's dealing with an imperfect person that he loves that's dying, and doesn't forget about the, the imperfect stuff, but needs to come to terms with it because his husband 
is going to die. We're all going to die. Right? It's it's the 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 human condition is terminal. And I forgot what book I read that in, but we're all going to die. It is scary the way Kit dies. And when I was reading this, I came at it from I think probably three, four different angles. Uh, you have the angle of what if I get sick, right? The what if eyes, kind of this selfishish kind of look for me, um, where you know you you worry about things like. Uh, is this a lump? Is this, um, am I sick because I have a cold? Am I sick because my immune system is compromised? I mean, it's kind of the dark places we go sometimes, um, about ourselves. And that's certainly, I think for a lot of people, when they have a serious health concern, we all kind of start the same way with like, what is this? I hope this is nothing. And uh, at least for me, um, I haven't had serious health, health con serious health concerns, but I'll go down that rabbit hole of what if it's this? What if it's this? What if it's this? The thing is, for me, it hasn't been this, this, or this. But in this situation, Kit may have had those concerns. I think Michael definitely did. And it turned out to be worst case scenario Michael goes online and looks up symptoms and looks up uh, kind of survivability and it is uh, I think what a lot of us have done and what he learns is not great it turns out to be the truth but so often when we look things up online that's not the not the situation we find ourselves in. So that's, it's kind of that gray area that's really hard as a person. So that's that's one angle. Another point of view is from Michael's point of view. And that is the point of view of a loved one who sees their loved one um, get sick or possibly get sick um, and get sick and eventually die. And I haven't had to experience that I've had uh, loved ones who have been sick, who have had to go to the hospital, who have had to have treatment, things that I've had to watch that are really rough as the, you know, the significant other of the loved one because you do want to step in. One, a lot of these problems, there's nothing you can do. I'm not a doctor, I'm a doctor's son. Uh, but there's not there's nothing you can do as a just a regular layman i mean you can't fix them you can do certain things that make it less bad for them uh but but when it's your loved one you want to take the pain away and you see that with michael like he wants to protect kit he wants to do anything he can to ease kids suffering and you know what there's not a whole lot there's i mean there's stuff that he can do but there's nothing he can do to cure kit and that's hard that is hard to realize i think that we don't have pure control over stuff um and it's something that i worry about i, I worry about it with my wife i worry about it with my family i worry about it with my kid that there's going to be something that happens that I can't control and I can't fix. And the reality is most of life is that way. So it's hard to look at that. The other point of view is from Kit's family's point of view. Now, Michael's family, his parents have died uh, when he was younger. And, uh, but Kit's, both of Kit's parents are still alive and they live in uh, Millersburg, Pennsylvania which is kind of close to where my parents, my mom, uh, her family's from. My mom grew up in Camp Hill in some, I don't know, what she, she grew up there, she lived there. That's where Kit was born. 
Uh, she went to Millersville. Michael mentions that they differentiate between Millersburg and Millersville. They're relatively close to each other. In eastern Pennsylvania, uh, I was born in western Pennsylvania, in Pittsburgh, and my dad's from central Pennsylvania. So, uh, the point of view of the parents, and this is especially hard for parents. Uh, I'm a parent, I have a daughter, and uh, I think what I've found and what I've heard, my daughter's four, is that your kids are always your kids. So no matter how old they get, you're always going to be worried about them as if they were the same age. What, you know, with some understanding that they, they do grow up. Like you can't, you can't treat a 24 year old the same way you treat a four year old. But every parent wants to be outlasted by their kids. And uh, we see its parents have to go through seeing their son die. And, and we get the updates from Michael, I think it's on Facebook, um, posts, just kind of updates. And um, Last year, I had a, a classmate, a friend, uh, who lost his son. And his son was a few years older than Noelia, but uh, we kind of lived through that process on Facebook. Um seeing some of what they were going through although I'm, I'm sure it was a fraction of the pain um, so I, you know I think there's always that fear as a parent and kids parents went through that that hell with losing their son losing their kid and I can't imagine it so uh, my friend lost his, his son to cancer too, and it's completely heartbreaking. So, uh, so you have that. I also think that Michael doesn't shy away from kind of the ugly end and, and finding some, some beauty and, and things that happen, but a lot of times I think what you see in movies, maybe what you read in books, although I haven't read a whole lot of, of kind of cancer related death books. It's almost like you see in movies, they get the characters getting sicker and sicker and then all of a sudden they die. And you kind of see them emaciated. They're ashen. They lose their hair. They're, you have tubes coming out of them all over the place. But you do miss those final moments. Or or they're kind of glossed over. Michael doesn't shy away from I, I think a lot of the the ugliness of those final days. Um as the person becomes more incapacitated, as they experience serious pain. Um, as they lose some grip on parts of reality just because of yeah, the effects of the medicine, uh, the effects of tumors on different parts of their body, including their brain. And Michael gives us a view into those final days, into those final hours, into the final moments before a kid dies. And that is, I don't know how the movie's going to do it, but... Uh, that's probably the first time I've read something that was that clear. And that was hard. So, but there are a lot of funny parts in this movie too. A movie, this book. Because Michael does take you through a lot of the thought process. And a lot of the earlier stuff is is also funny. It's not just like gallows humor. But there is, you know, funny earlier things that happen in their lives together that that Michael discusses before we get to death. Um, and he, and he, I think he handles it well. Also, I, yeah, I, I think I mentioned the hero dies. The hero is not a perfect person. And 
I really appreciated Michael not sidestepping some of the issues throughout their lives, the counseling that they've had to have, the infidelity. Uh, really, I think he kind of lets it all hang out there, at least as far as we know, with uh, a lot of the challenges, and there are challenges with being with somebody, being married, having a long-term relationship. Uh, there are going to be things that people do that are kind of like tragic, are lower than your expectations that you have for them. And I appreciate that Michael does not gloss over that or doesn't gloss over that much at least because he does talk about some of the things that he was hurt by that Kit did and then having to reconcile those things at the end. Uh, I think the hardest things, I've cried for one book, uh, Doctors and Friends, Last year, I think it was last year, I did get a little teary-eyed for some of this. I think the hardest parts for me were the scenes that the, I guess I don't know if they're called scenes when it's nonfiction in a book. I don't know. The moments where Kit understands that he's dying, that there's, they've kind of exhausted these different chances. I mean, I think in everyone's mind, they hope that there's some miracle. But um, if you're religious, I think a lot of times you also think this is pain and death ends that pain. And, you know, they talk about a little bit about kick going to heaven and preparing the designs and the... And, uh, the the way for for Michael um, I think that the parts that got me a lot were the moments where when Kit was dying or he was presented with horrible information about the way his treatment was going or the way that the tumors were reacting he was concerned about other people. And I think like as somebody who has a wife and a kid, one of those fears that I would have of ever getting a terminal illness was how do I prepare my family? And how do I leave them in a situation that they're most prepared for and stable and um, you want them to live on and be happy and uh, I think like that's where a lot of the comfort would come from is understanding that you dying is not hurting I mean I think you know it hurts them emotionally and everything but it's not ending their lives you want them to continue to live and be happy and do what you haven't been able to do or won't be able to do and there are moments where Kit talks to Michael about what he wants him to do you know what he to to live on to live for in the ways that kid won't be able to to take care of his parents or his family um to find somebody else to be happy and it's it just kind of those i think it's those tough moments because that feels especially real that someone you can tell it's clicking even in the writing, you can tell it's clicking for Kit in those moments of like, I will not be here forever. And a lot of times we think in terms of we're going to be around as long as we want to be around. We don't always have the choice. Most of the times we don't have the choice. But in those moments, he's thinking about other people. And that's, that's, hard, to, that's hard to read. I really like the book. I give it five stars. Uh, it has opened my eyes to a number of things, um, has probably expanded my comfort zones for some of the areas. There's some, some gay sex in here and outside of reading a comic book called, uh, Midnight and Apollo or Apollo Midnight, which I didn't realize was a gay comic. 
Um, I haven't really read these top, I don't know, topics or, or areas that had quite the pronounced. And it wasn't even that much, I guess. That maybe that's I'm just so sheltered, but um, so it has, I think, expanded my comfort zones, and um, it's certainly been an interesting process of reading something that's so crushing, but done in a way that makes it less uncomfortable, more comfortable. That sounds a little dark. More comfortable for the reader. And um, just to have a little bit of experience learning about Kit and Michael and their relationship and their marriage and the ups and downs through the years and the process of losing somebody has been uh, quite, the, quite the journey. And it is... It is hard when you think that it's a true story. Like uh, there are moments I said that I cried for Doctors and Friends. That's that's fictional. Uh, the book is fictional. I did cry, um, but for this, there are moments where you feel pretty crushed, and you realize like somebody went through this. This is this is real. Thanks to David for. For having my book signed, you'll you'll see his name. If you read this, if you read this book, you see David I'm talked about every so often, um, and he's obviously an important part of his brother's life and their family. Uh, David is a squid. Don't hold that against him. Thanks, David, for for getting this signed and opening my eyes to it. Uh, I am going to watch the the movie um, soon, and then I will do a review between the book and the movie. I don't have Smurfs. Uh, I did watch Smurfs and Gummy Bears and like basically everything else in, in the 80s. I'm a little bit younger than Michael and, and David, but I did watch those shows. But my 80s show was... Do, 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 do. Thundercats. Oh! So that's what I have. That's my toy. Uh, I did have a couple Smurfs <clears throat> and California Raisins, which kind of felt like the same designs, but that's it. Like, it, it, re it really was a great book, and I look forward to seeing the movie and and kind of coming back to you and letting you know what I thought of, of both. The movie is in theaters now. I think it's also on demand. <clears throat> it stars uh, Jim Parsons, who plays Michael Osiello. It also stars uh, Sally Fields, and Kit is played by a guy who, and I looked it up on IMDb, is referred to as Anal Guy from the show Fleabag or Flea. I've only watched one couple. Of, I've watched a couple episodes. He was, I think, he was in the first episode, but it's, I think, it's called Fleabag. So he was in that. And I'm not very good with actor names, but so I look forward to watching it. It, it looks like it's going to be good. I there from what I've seen, it looks like there are going to be some pretty pretty big differences uh, between the book and the movie. But I don't know yet, so we'll see. And I will do that that video. Uh, well done, Michael, on this book. Sorry that you had to go through what I already went through, and. Um, to David, thank you for getting my book signed. Thanks for being here today. I think the next video is going to be that movie, the book movie uh, comparison review. Well, I know you have anything to say? No? Cool sword. So, thanks. Have a good one. Thunder! Thunder! Thunder!